Hello, this is Robert, and I've got a little project I want to talk to you about. I've been working on this for the past couple months. This is a logging Geiger counter. So it's basically a GPS logger with a Geiger counter and a dosimeter all in one little package. In a couple days, I'm actually going to be taking a trip to Chernobyl to do some photography um, of the exclusion zone and of Priapit and um, the actual reactor and everything. And I you know, wanted something with me to measure radiation and also get a better idea of what the radiation levels are like. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Chernobyl, back in 1986, there was a catastrophic explosion at the Chernobyl power plant in Ukraine. That explosion actually caused a lot of radioactive material to go up into the atmosphere and spread pretty much all over Western Europe. Additionally, a lot of that material ended up in what is now called the exclusion zone, which is an uninhabited zone outside of Chernobyl and Priapit, the town where the workers worked. And that whole exclusion zone is highly radioactive. There's still a lot of material and debris um, in the ground. And also during the whole cleanup process of the power plant and the explosion, all the vehicles and all the military um, equipment is actually still there in the exclusion zone. It can't leave because it's too radioactive. To give you a little bit of perspective of how radioactive it is, the accident happened back in 1986. And generally speaking, that zone is still as radioactive as the land outside the Fukushima plant. And that happened just two years ago. So the radiation has lingered and it affected a very wide area. And going in there for photography, I really wanted something to get a better idea of what the radiation levels actually meant. So the device itself is pretty simple. We've got a basic um, 16 by two character display up here, a um, couple of the side buttons. And on the back side, um, we've actually got a USB charger. It's just a USB micro jack inside. We've got a very large battery that sits down here at the bottom, and it will operate this unit for about 26 hours. Now using the alarm, the mute, and the LCD buttons, we can actually turn off the alarm, we can turn off the buzzer, and we can also turn off the LCD. And this kind of goes into like a silent stealth mode, because I do plan on actually logging the radiation on the airplane ride over. And let's turn it on. And at this point, we can actually set the alarm. And I'll just leave that and it will set. And here we can also clear out the dosage if we want. And then here we go. This is the main interface. It takes a few seconds to calculate. And so right now we're only sitting at about 12 CPM, which is equal to about 0.07 microsieverts per hour. And this up here is just basically a bar graph that shows the actual counts. It's set for a thousand CPM as the max, so we really won't see that much activity with it. And if we switch to the secondary screen, uh, we can see that we don't yet have a GPS lock. And our total dosage here is 1.31. That's all the um, testing that I've done with it. And actually, you just saw dosage show up here. Now we have a GPS lock. And um, this down here is showing the average over 10 minutes. So you can see a percentage over here. It's only 5% into calculating that average. As that gets up to 100%, that will have got an average for 10 minutes, and that will be a running average that will go along. So once this gets up to 100%, we'll have a number here that will equate to the past 10 minutes worth of counts. So I'm gonna turn this over and open it up and I'll show you what's inside. There is the separate faceplate right there. I actually started with a full PCB and I just ended up cutting it down. And I actually used a file just to file it into the right size that I needed. Um, so we got our four slide switches here, of course. Um, we got the LED, the push button, and then these two connectors go up to um, the LCD board here. You can also see that we've got a um, power cell sitting over here. And then down there, tucked in there, is actually a lily pad vibe motor. And right here is our battery. This is actually a um, Panasonic 18650 lithium ion cell. This is um, about 3,200 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts, so it holds a lot of juice. There's actually an SBM 20 tube similar to this one. Um, sitting underneath about like that. So that sits on the underneath side of this. And also if we look in this top corner up here, we can see a helical antenna. That is um, an ADH Tech um, helical GPS unit. So this whole shield just comes off. It's got some headers attached. 
and underneath we've got the main Geiger counter PCB. Um, this whole section over here is the actual Geiger counter section specifically. And then we've got an Atmega 328 and some other stuff over on this side. So this is the Arduino section over here. Um, you can see we've got a voltage regulator that actually connects over into the GPS because the GPS takes a 3.3 volts and I didn't have a 3.3 volt regulator on any anywhere on here. Um, and then you can see the tube connects into there and goes underneath the board. And over here, we've actually got an open log with a um, micro SD card sitting right there in the corner. So unfortunately, I designed this to where you can't easily access the card, which is fine because I really don't want to be opening this and closing it um, when I'm on my trip. I really just want to log for the entire time. And then when I get back home, dump the information off and see what it looks like. This is fully enclosed inside the unit and non-accessible, but this should last two months worth or so, logging 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I'm not too terribly concerned. Hopefully the Liger will be a good tool to have with me in Chernobyl. And I'm really excited to get back um, safely and also to get back and look at the data off of this. I really want to plot it and see what my total dosage was for the time, you know, how much radiation did I receive? I mean, I'm kind of roughly estimating that I'm gonna get about five years worth as compared to, you know, normal background levels of radiation here. I think in the four days, I'm gonna be exposed to somewhere around five years worth, um, but I really don't know. Um, also, when I get back, in addition to having all the data available, I'll have it um, available for everyone to download and take a look at if you're interested. Um, I'm also gonna try and do a tutorial on the hardware and the software and everything that went into this. I'll do a full teardown. I'd really rather not tear it down right now because in a couple days I'm going to be needing it. So um, I'll do a big teardown when I get back to show you everything that's inside of this. But I'm really eager to see what the data is going to look like and um, I'll definitely post it and check back in about a month.